Hello and a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitayo and I'm here to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. <clears throat> now if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, I'm sure you'll be asking, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this de daily devotional? Why not another one? Why this particular one? Well, the reason why I'm sharing this particular daily devotional and not another one is because as I prepare to enter into the year 2020, God instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional. That was last year. And I was able to start the assignment in the month of June 2020. So I shared this devotional not only in June, but also in August, October, and December 2020. And come 2021, by the grace of God, I resumed sharing in the month of March. And now I'm rounding off the month of May. And by the grace of God, I'm also going to be sharing this daily devotional in subsequent months, by the grace of God. And I want to say a big thank you for visiting my channel. Uh, as you're on my channel, if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe. And most importantly, please tap the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you're aware. Uh, and you can drop me a comment or ask me a question or request for us to pray together. And I'll be, uh, the privilege is mine. And I thank God for this opportunity. Now, how did I get to know Pastor Deboy? He led me to Christ in October 1997, many years ago when I was in the University of Lagos in Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor Deboy's style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures to read. He'll give you a memory verse. And when you combine those two pieces of scripture, it helps you to understand the body of the text and what he's trying to communicate to us via the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. And our daily devotional is very, very, very good and helpful in your study and knowledge of the Word of God. But you must still study the Word of God. Remember that Jesus Christ said that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Now, today is Sunday, May the 30th, and we're fast coming to the end of the month of May. And we thank God for bringing us thus far. Amen. Now, our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Genesis, and the book of Genesis is the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 19, verses 15 to 17. Genesis chapter 19, verses 15 to 17, just three verses, and today I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version, amen. So, Genesis chapter 19, from verse 15 to 17, and thus goes the reading of God's word from the traditional King James, it says, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife um, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in, the, in all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Just three verses and I will explain very quickly. So these verses we're talking about Lot. I'm sure we've heard of Lot. So, and what happened here is, I'll just quickly give a background as quickly as possible. God uh, wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, so, he came down with two, he came down to, to earth with two angels, visited his friend Abraham, and told Abraham that, you know, the sin and the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah had come up to heaven because their sin was very grievous. So, he had come down, according to the report that he had received, to come and see by himself because he was going to destroy that city and Abraham began to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. Why was God angry with Sodom and Gomorrah that he wanted to destroy the city? Because uh, you know they this they were lesbians and there was a lot of sexual immorality in Sodom and Gomorrah, they um homosexuals, and God said that the cry of this the sin their sin was very grievous and he was going to destroy the city. And Abraham said to him, You know, if you come to the city and he negotiated with God and said, If you find Ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, would you still destroy the city? Because God is righteous, God is faithful, and he will never destroy the righteous with the wicked. And God said, if I find ten people, 
in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will not destroy the city. Unfortunately, there were not 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah and God destroyed the city. But there was a, an issue. The issue was that Lot and his wife and his two daughters lived in Sodom. So um, the angels got to Sodom and Gomorrah. A few things happened, you know, and um, God wanted Lot to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but he was delaying his wife was looking for her jewelry he was slow the angels was trying to get them to move out very very quickly because the destruction was coming very fast but they were slow so the angels got them and the bible says that the lord being merciful because god was really angry at sodom and gomorrah for their sins the bible says he, he said their sin was so grievous it was so grievous that god had to come down himself to come and see you know so um, and he was, the Bible says the anger of God is as a messenger of death. So God was angry at what they were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah, the immorality. God was angry. He does not like that. And we must not do what God doesn't like. So, but the Bible says that God was merciful unto Lot and caused him to escape the carnage that was about to happen. And that's the background of that story. Now, today is Sunday, May the 30th. And the title of today's daily devotional is, But for the mercy of God. But for the mercy of God. And the uh, memory verse is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 13. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 13. And it says, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So uh, this, that memory verse, uh, that was a scripture spoken by Jesus himself. He was giving a parable about two people who went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, a religious leader, and the other was a, a tax collector. Now, in those days, the tax collectors, or what they call publicans, were the chief sinners, you know, you know, because they were thieves, they were extortioners. So, But these two people, the so-called righteous leader, and religious leader, and the publican, this tax collector, they went to pray. And, you know, the, the Pharisee was like, you know, me, I'm a righteous man. I don't do this. I don't drink. I don't smoke. You know, I'm not like this tax collector. You know, so he was mentioning all the things he was do. He could. He, you know, his resume and how righteous he was. But the tax collector, when he came before God, he knelt down and said, "God, just have mercy on me." He couldn't even look to heaven. He looked down and said, "God, have mercy on me." And Jesus said, "It was the tax collector who went home home justified." In other words, it was the tax collector who was declared not guilty. The title again is but for the mercy of God. Pastor says when a man receives mercy, it would appear as if the fellow is wise or a genius. It would appear as if righteousness has bestowed upon him divine blessings. And pastor says what can one do without the mercy of God? The Bible says it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. In Lamentations 3.22 Today's memory verse tells us of the mercy enjoyed by the publican or the tax collector when he begged for it. Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased and everyone that humbled himself shall be exalted. Amen. So what pastor is saying in this first and second paragraph is that, you know, um, everything is, it is just by God's mercies that we are not consumed. You know, it's just, uh, you don't, you, you, you don't deserve God's mercy because you don't drink and you don't smoke. It's not by works of righteousness. It's a spiritual something that God does. The Bible says that God is good and his mercy endureth forever. The Bible says that God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy and he will have compassion on whom he will have compassion. But when you ask God for mercy, one thing about him is that he will never deny you. It doesn't matter how great your sin is. Okay. And you know, um, um, the Lord Jesus is saying that when somebody asks God for mercy, it's a sign of humility. It, it's because of pride that people cannot accept, that people cannot ask God for mercy. They feel it's pride that makes them feel that God does not exist. You know. Pastor says, what prevents some people from receiving mercy from the Lord is the failure to admit that we are sinners and that we need to turn from our wicked ways. It is amazing that some children of God are in the habit of living in a world where the end justifies the means. This is not the gospel. This is not the good news. When they are caught stealing, they rationalize it by putting the blame on the fact that they are jobless. 
some ladies claim that they have taken prostitution because they are jobless and they need to take care of their aged parents okay so and then uh, pastor says that in ezekiel 33 verses 14 to 15 it says again when i say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die if he turns from his sin and do that which is lawful and right walking in the statutes of life without committing iniquity he shall surely live and not die so pastor is saying that don't excuse your sin and pastor is saying that you know the reason why people don't receive mercy is because um they they don't believe you know they don't think that they need to ask god for forgiveness you know but the bible is saying that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of god and that you know you you must ask god for forgiveness for, for your sins you know and don't don't ever explain away your sin that oh the reason why i was told it, i stole it because we are well you know there's no food in the house so we had to steal the bible says that if a thief steals because he's hungry when he's caught he will re restore seven times that's no excuse. Some people go into prostitution because they say, oh, they need money to take care of their family. That is no excuse. You cannot excuse your sin away. You must confess your sin. And Pastor then quotes the scripture in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, he says that if God says to the wicked that you're going to die, if the wicked repents and turns from his wicked way, God will let him live and not die. Pastor says another thing to note is that it takes humility to acknowledge a sin or a wrongdoing. The Bible says that he that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. In Proverbs 28 verse 13. And as I read this, I remember that the Bible talked about how um, it was Job who said this in the book of Job. He said that Adam hid his sin in his bosom and covered his iniquity. You know, so what he was saying was that had it been Adam, when God caught him eating, you know, when God asked him, have you eaten of the fruit? He, he, he says, it's not me, it's the wife, the woman you gave me. If he had said, yes, Lord, I'm sorry. I know you said we shouldn't eat the fruit. I ate it. Please forgive me. God would have forgiven him. But instead, he hid his iniquity in his bosom. You know, this scripture is saying that if you cover your sin, you will not prosper. But if you confess it and forsake it, God will show you mercy. God always shows mercy to those who ask for mercy. The Bible says he is good. And his mercies endure it forever. Let the house of Israel now say that he is good and his mercies endure it forever. So Sister Tyler is also saying that God is good and his mercies endure it forever. Pastor says, your day of mercy comes when you humbly ask for it from the one who is rich in mercy. That is the almighty God. God is rich in mercy in Ephesians 2, 4. Bring forth the day of God's mercy in your life by calling on the Lord today for forgiveness if you have not repented of your sins through Jesus Christ. If you are already a child of God but seem to be lacking his mercies, call on him like a child will cry to his loving father for mercy. You and your loved ones will partake of the Lord's mercy today in the mighty name of Jesus. God is faithful and that's why he sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. You know, the Bible says that the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary he speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So that blood came. Jesus shed his blood for us so that we can have mercy. You know, we can receive mercy from God. Amen. And you know, God loves you. God loves us. He loves us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you can put your name there and say, For God so loved Sister Tyre. For God so loved Mohammed. For God so loved Bridget, and for God so loved David, that he gave David his only begotten son, that if David believes in Jesus, he will not perish, but have everlasting life. So the prayer point is, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me and give me greater testimonies. Remember the blind man, he said, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And they tell him, keep quiet, keep quiet. But he shouted even the more and said, Jesus Christ son of david have mercy on me and that was jesus's covenant name so jesus christ stopped the bible said jesus stopped when he heard his cry and he said what do you want me to do for you and the blind man said i am my eyes may be opened and jesus opened his eyes so let us pray our dear lord we thank you for giving us the privilege to hear your word father we are asking in the name of jesus that you have mercy upon us in the name of our lord jesus christ do not deal with us according to our sins and do not punish us according to our iniquity. Father, today I stand in the gap for me and my brothers, for me and my brothers and my sisters who are listening, that you have mercy upon us, upon our families, according to your loving kindness and according to the multitude of your tender mercies. 
blot out all our transgressions. We hide ourselves under the shadow of your wings and under the blood of Jesus. And we ask that you have mercy upon us from generation to generation. In Jesus' name, we are grateful, dear Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this was not too long. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And may God bless you exceedingly. Have a lovely day.